So how much NAC should you give someone who's taken a paracetamol overdose? Well, this is a surprisingly controversial question, considering that we've had N-acetylcysteine since the 1960s, but different people in different parts of the world are still doing quite different things from one another. I'm going to talk mostly about intravenous NAC because that's how it's given almost everywhere. The traditional regimen was a three bag regimen where you get a loading dose in the first hour that is 150 milligrams per kilo. Then after that, you get a second bag which has 50 milligrams per kilo and that's given over four hours. And then finally, you get a third bag with 100 milligrams per kilo and that's given over a much longer time, say 16 hours. So over about 20 or 21 hours, you get given 300 milligrams per kilo. This has been shown to be very effective but unfortunately you get quite frequent adverse reactions and uh, these are things like GI side effects and also anaphylactoid type reactions which are the most serious reactions people tend to get to NAG. It's also quite a complicated regimen to give so you've got three different bags all with different concentrations of NAC and all running at different infusion rates and this makes it easy to make an error when you're prescribing and easy to make an error when you're the one administering the drug. There was a study by Hayes that found that in the three bag regimen, about 33% of patients had a drug error committed whilst they were receiving NAC, which is a really high number. The dose of NAC is also quite arbitrary and so is the entire schedule that it's given over. And this has been pointed out by Barry Rumack, who is known for the paracetamol treatment nomogram. This paper by Angela Chu points out that you get a reaction, an adverse reaction to N-acetylcysteine in anywhere between 8.5% to 77% of people that are receiving NAC. That's obviously a very wide uh, range of different rates, but that essentially comes down to which study you read. Most of the reactions to NAC occur in the first hour in that first bag, which is given at a higher concentration at a faster rate. This has led people to speculate that the adverse reactions are a rate-related phenomenon. And therefore, it raises the question of can we do better with a two bag regimen where neither bag is quite as fast as the first bag in the three bag plan. So I'm going to talk about this paper by Anselm Wong, which was discussing what happens when you simplify the three bag regimen to two bags. And essentially, they changed their guidelines in their hospital, and then they looked at what happened before and after the guideline change. So this was a historical cohort study. They compared just under 400 patients on the three bag regimen to just over 200 patients treated with two bags. And they gave the same total dose of NAC in both sets of patients. The main finding was that there were markedly fewer anaphylactoid reactions in the group that were given two bag NAC. So only 4.3% of the patients had a reaction compared to 10% in the three bag group. And this came without any increase in hepatotoxicity or death or other adverse outcomes. So people did just as well with two bags and they got far fewer reactions than the patients had when they were given three bags. So this raises the question of, is there then a new way of giving NAC in just two bags? And the two bag regimen that has been proposed is the same total dose, so 300 milligrams per kilo over about 20 hours. Um, the only thing is that the first bag is a 200 milligram per kilo four hour bag rather than getting that really high loading dose in the first hour. Then the second bag is basically the same 100 milligrams per kilo over 16 hours. So all it does is slightly slow down the rate of administration in the first hours and that should help people have a lower rate of adverse reactions to the drug that you're giving them.